have a video here with a lot of different things in it. There's a blog post right here that shows uh, the new character that I'm guessing is going to be vital for Dark Dimension 4 that's going to be Yellow Jacket. He's been in the game files, at least his character artwork has been in the game files for at least since the beginning of the game. I believe he's been in the game files since soft launch. And according to Tama, we're going to be getting two other PIM team because they make reference to PIM team. And that is going to be Stature and Ghost. And I'm guessing we're probably going to get some minor reworks for uh, Ant-Man and Wasp. And it looks like they're going to be uh, boosted for Dark Dimension only. So not raids, which is kind of a disappointment. There's also a Strike Time video, which uh, I've got notes on. We're going to go over it. Very controversial, the Battle Pass. And I can read by here in the comment section that people are not... There's a lot of anxiety and speculation and fear about the Battle Passes. And then we'll talk about it. I know I made a video about battle passes about a week ago but we're talking about that and then dark dimension 4 also some controversial things in uh how they're going to do dark dimension 4 with uh removing some of the legendaries uh using the legendary trait tag to remove legendaries from certain nodes very controversial and then also i wanted to talk about uh the fright night orb um yesterday there was an issue this is for the new event uh, they're going to be issuing out compensation. And then I also want to draw attention to Yuletide Bringer's um, spreadsheet here. And yesterday, uh, we had, uh, with uh, Vrondius and other people, we had calculated that those event orbs gave out two antivitums on average per char, but actually the number is a lot lower. It's closer to 1.25. And what that means to you is that the maximum amount that you can get on this, this event is closer to 200 than the 250 I thought of yesterday. And uh, let me just say this. Um, looks like you're, if you want to max this out without whaling, this is what you really want to know. 97 wins per day, more than four rotations per day. Yuck, 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 yuck. Let's get into the blog post and, and go over the kit for... Uh, I always want to... It's Yellow Jacket. I always want to call him Crossbone because the, the character's name is Darren Cross. Uh, anyways, I'm going to call him Crossbones all the time. I have a feeling. Let's go. Uh, let's just get right into the kit uh, because uh, we'll go right to the basic and that because that's where it's interesting. Passive. Don't cross me for the name Darren Cross. While this character has offense up, and we're going to get into the kit because he gives himself offense up quite frequently. Gain 20% speed and 20%, 25% day drain. In Dark Dimension, gain 20% damage for self and Pimtech allies. And I, I, I want to kind of just draw attention to this Reddit post right here where it says, um, not enjoying direct dark dimension tags. At least symbiotes also have raid tags. Making characters just as useful in a mode where you play twice every few months sucks. I kind of agree with him. By the way, anybody else see the Spider Gwen comic in the background? That is in the Strike Time video. I'm wondering if that means that we're going to get Spider Gwen. Uh, I'd be pretty excited about that. I think it was actually a Gwen Stacy. I mean, I think it's Spider Gwen. They've done hints in the past with stuff in the back. Maybe this is a way of telling us what to expect. Spider Gwen is the fifth young Avenger. Makes sense to me. Let's go to this ultimate. Now, ultimate, I like. You can do it on turn one. Energy cost five five. This looks like a a, a super souped up Mbaku move where he might if Mbaku slash Black Panther, where he might be able to wipe out like a whole team. Energy cost five five. Gain offense up to maximum of three. Cool. Attack primary target for 400% damage. All adjacent targets for 350% damage. On kill, apply two random positive effects to self and all Pym Tech and villain allies now. Uh, the, the, the really important villain tech allies that come to the top of my head would be like Doc Ock, Ultron, Scientist Supreme, Minerva. Woo, Minerva. Dark Dimension 4 probably is going to be this guy in Minerva, I'm just guessing. But this is the important part. Then repeat this attack targeting the most injured enemy. So this kind of uh, reads out to me similar to the way the M'Baku, only it's going to be able to bounce around. I imagine if he's... I imagine this is going to delete all the minions on the... And then any weak allies. Looks very, very powerful. 5-5 five, five is not short, but that's relatively short. If we can get a battery in there to feed him energy like Star-Lord, Jessica Jones, or Thanos, his special Spiteful Sting, and this is interesting, energy cost 5-5, five, five, and this kit just reads straight up for Dark Dimension. Steal 30% health, so this is not drain. This is like uh, the middle ability on Dark Phoenix, the, the ultimate 
on Ebony Ma and the ultimate on uh, the ultimate on uh, the <laughs> Minerva. So it basically, uh, high HP characters, that's monster. That's going to be a huge attack if they have a high HP. This is straight up an ability designed for Dark Dimension. From primary target and redistribute to self, receiving additional 4,000 health, bypasses heal block, and then his basic attack has 250% uh, damage, bonus attack for 230% damage, so it's a double tap. All very good. Now... Uh, there's a, a video here, 31 second ability, a video right here, and I just want to go to the last ability because the last ability is the one that I'm the most interest of, interested of because I think it's going to work like in Baku. As you can see right here, it splits and it hits uh, and that guy dies and then it immediately attacks again. So basically, if you get a kill, it goes again, uh, which is amazing. It looks like it's just going to keep going. Um, I wonder if it's only going to do it twice or if it can keep going, keep going, keep going, kind of like M'Baku. That's the way I'm expecting it. Uh, also, inside of this blog post, uh, they talk about the video, which I've got a, I've got my boomer notes, and we'll go over the video. Um, legendary, legendary event is going to be Invisible Woman. She's coming back. Uh, Sinister Six, we got double drops. Don't forget that two times zero is zero. Blitzes, Venom, and Nobu, and I'm actually... Just hit 3,000 subs here on Twitch, and I, behind me, you can't see it on the ground. I've got my Nobu cosplay I'm going to be putting on here soon. <laughs> uh, also rumored uh, that there's going to be a hand rework. Um, so the other two Pym characters, according to the uh, some of the Tana videos, is that he's saying that there's going to be a hand rework and that the other two Pym team characters are going to be Stature and um, Ghost. So let's see if that goes. And then we also got a Venom Blitz. Bonus event, I'm highly interested in this. I don't see when this is going to be, but I'm mostly interested in the double drops on the training modules. And so I'll, oftentimes I make reference to those campaign energy events where you can buy the campaign energy that might make them of higher value when that runs. It says uh, it's going to go sometime during this 10 day period that the, the anti-venom event is running. And then we've got starting tonight, uh, double drops on all of these characters. And then the most important part of the text part of the blog post is right here. It says, that's all for this week. Be sure to check back next week because of the consists will spell doom for you. Uh, that is signaling that we're going to get the kits for Dr. Doom. Now, I'm not, I'm going to just play this in the background right here, but this is strike time number 11, Dark Dimension 4 and Battle Pass. There's Cerebro. And I am going to uh, give a brief synopsis of what's important in this video. He talked about ISO 8 and that we have what we call ISO 8 Tier 1. And they're going to introduce Tier 2 in the spring, theoretically in the spring of 2021. Now, uh, we can see that it's coded Tier 1. I believe the game files also include a Tier 3. So they're saying that we should get new abilities and more customization with the Tier 2, which they're going to release in theory in the spring of 2021. And I believe that in the playtest server, we saw this already also. And he also said that he's gonna add some color variation uh, to um, some of the ISO 8 to make it just stand a little bit more. And then you can see the Gwen Stacy comic right there that we were talking about there. Talked also about on ISO 8, uh, like right now, you can save your ISO 8 settings inside of uh, Alliance War. They're also going to be able to save your ISO 8 settings on defense in Arena. I think that's a big deal. He talks about the Sim Blitzing event coming in December. Why can't we have that right now? You know what? I gotta, gotta rant for a second. This this anti venomin is so grindy, um, and it seems like the other events had better rewards. Well, they always had like I don't know. This event has a better character, so I guess that makes up for it. But this event, man, so much blitzing. Why can't we have the Sim Blitz right now? Anyways, Sim Blitz says it's going to be like a rap quiz to know the meta. It's going to be a lot of fun. Coming in December. And then this is the controversial part of the video. Battle passes. It's going to be tied to PvP. But, uh, <laughs> boy, not the drafting style. The quick play, and they're going to retitle it called Real Time Arena. And so what he said is that uh, he said that the the that the drafting process in PvP was uh, generally disliked, and I agree. He said it. He, this guy here, Durr, said it was like a third people didn't like it, third people liked it, 
and a third of the people were indifferent. I saw much higher numbers. I saw closer to probably two thirds of the people actually did not like PVP. And he said the problem with the, the quick play is that it became tedious at the high end because everybody was doing black order versus black order. So the idea is that they're going to introduce this battle pass system, which is going to be very controversial. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but the battle pass system is going to introduce rewards uh, with various different uh, activities where, you know, you get a certain amount of damage done with Sinister Six or a certain team and certain activities that play out either on a daily or weekly basis. Basically, you're designing in a way so that you get a variety of teams that you play in this quick play PvP. So... Uh, they said the battle pass system is going to be centered around the, the the PvP that does not draft, and it's going to have some sort of reward system. That being said, you know most of the comments I'm saying is seeing is like people don't want to spend money, they don't like this this battle pass, and I'll just say this one more time. Uh, the only thing that we have we don't know we have to see it when we see it. But other scopely games like Looney Tunes World of Mayhem, they do have. Uh, battle passes looks like they're a minimum of 20 bucks and then they have a premium battle pass which lets you cut to the front of, cut to the front of the line for $49 50 bucks and I want to say this like um, several people in my chat like Sith Lord Fluffy who's a moderator and a twitch streamer he plays a game by uh, scopely called Star Trek Fleet Command and he feels that the $20 battle pass over there is of high value and he's not afraid of this and he thinks it's going to be a good thing based on his experience with the other Scopely game. We will see the juries out. In my experience, battle passes are good for light spenders and spenders in general, but bad for free to play. And the way that I, if, if I mean, mine will be blown if it doesn't play out like this, that if you ever spend 20 bucks in a monthly period, the first 20 bucks you should spend is on the battle pass because usually these battle pass systems are generous and it's designed it's designed in a way to get the free to play players off out of that free to play ca category and get them to spend controversial for sure uh i will reserve judgment until i see the numbers the rewards and the structure but this is what i'm expecting at this time uh next dark dimension four this is a little bit controversial he said that um, when they designed Dark Dimension 2, it was high health, and that led to long matches. And then Dark Dimension 3, he felt that the feedback on the city and the cosmic nodes was generally good, and most of the hatred... I'm putting a little bit of words in his mouth. I'm generalizing this idea. And most of the, the dislike for Dark Dimension 3 had to do with the first eight nodes. And he said that was it was designed that way in part because they were working around Phoenix and that they created this legendary tag and that some of the nodes in the new Dark Dimension 4 will be designed specifically for legendary characters and then some of the nodes you won't be able to use legendary characters uh, because he said that Phoenix kind of um, forced the design of Dark Dimension 3. I see this as a good thing, but I do see this as kind of a bad thing that, wow, these characters are great. I hope I get to use them. But again, until I see what percentage of them are, are you know, excluding legendary, allowing legendary, and so on, I want to see it. Uh, I certainly want to use my favorite characters in this mode, and I hope I do get an opportunity to do that. And uh, personally, I was okay with the way that the city and the cosmic played out in Dark Dimension 3. Uh, but I also suspect that we're going to be forced into uh, Yellow Jacket and Pim and Friends uh, based on the way this kit reads. Also in the strike time, uh, let's see, they said uh, Dark Dim Gear 15, Dark Dimension 4, they mentioned the Legendary. Greek raids will have a difficulty selector and that they are going, and then on this higher difficulty of the Greek raids, they are going to remove the ability to heal in between nodes and um i saw a split of uh not liking this in my chat and indifference and i want to see how that plays out um but i typically they and what they were stressing is that healers and isolate healer class is going to be more important so they're not removing healing from the the battles themselves they're talking about using the refreshes in between nodes is going to be removed. I don't know how I feel about that. We're going to see how that goes. And then they they, they mentioned that they're going to um, 
update the squad management system. Seems a little too little, a little too late that you're going to be able to manage your, your squad from the, the roster screen. No mention of tabs. Get it together! Get some tabs, please! We need some tabs for squad management. All right, well, I think that'll do it for now. Um, I, I, I don't want to um, pass too much judgment on the battle pass. I do have some reservations, but I want to see how it goes. I hope that this is a a light spender dolphin. Like we make up these words like dolphins and whales and krakens, but light spender friendly. But I hope this also doesn't discourage free to play players. Uh, for me to get behind this battle pass, it, it needs to be pretty fair. Let me know what you think in the comment section about all this good stuff. Are you excited about it? I'm sure it's going to be mixed. I'm sure the comment section is going to be on fire. Love to see your thoughts. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and keep on gaming. Bye. We were on the run, rocking around the clock. Now all we need is right here in front of us. In front of us. So can we just stop?